Hi everyone, if you're watching this video, you must have watched dozens of Oli tutorials already and realized different people say different things, such as use your ankle when you pop, roll your front foot to slide up your board, and have your shoulders parallel to your board, etc, etc. Although these things may apply to some people, but might not apply to you as we have different body structures and set up our boards, or perhaps because of our skill levels. The point is, how to do it changes, but why we do it doesn't change. So why don't we reverse the process and drill down the objective science behind an Oli first, and talk about how to do it after understanding objective reasons. My Ollies are neither high nor stylish. So please find someone else if you're looking for those dips. But if you love to think, why the trick is for you. Let me clarify something first. There is no magic in Ollie and its variations. You have to fall over and over and over and over again. And you have to spend quite a lot of time to get your Ollies down. Nevertheless, it will all be worth it after all. And I hope to help you better understand Oli more effectively with this content. As you know, an Oli is a simple maneuver. It consists of a pop and slide of a front fit. In terms of the movement of your board, that seems everything. But in reality, you'd encounter the following problems. While you can pop your board without any problem when you're standing on the ground, but it becomes mysteriously harder when you're on your board. Or sometimes your board doesn't come up, no matter how hard you pop or slide up your front foot. And don't worry, I'm not going to say just pop as hard as you can or try to stay there longer. Instead, my goal here is to let you understand why those problems happen. I believe the commonly overlooked elements may hold the key to understanding those problems. Let's break it down according to the timeline. Step number one. Jumping or lifting up your weight. Jumping is a step that's so obvious that so many people underestimate it. But it can be why your board doesn't come up, even when you try to pop the tail as hard as possible. When standing on your board, your body presses your board down due to gravity. With your body holding your board down, you won't be able to lift the nose of your board no matter how hard you pop the tail. And similar problems happen when you pop too early. To avoid this, you have to clear your body weight from your board before popping. If your body weight is not pushing down your board, you can pop the tail like you do when you're standing on the ground. So try to lift your body first to reduce the pressure of your body on your board. In this process, your board stays flat as you push down the board with both your feet evenly. It would help if you focused on using your thighs when doing this. We have two body parts that help lift our bodies, thighs and calves. In skateboarding, thighs raise our bodies and calves pop the tail. Try to keep this difference in mind. Now that you know the importance of loosening the pressure on your board before popping, it's time to pop down the tail. Generally, when you jump on the ground, your left and right feet leave the ground at the same height. You then pull up your legs and your body floats in the air. Because you're used to this feeling, you might loosen the pressure on your back foot as soon as you feel your body goes up. If you do this though, you won't be able to give the tail enough energy and it will not hit the ground. So practice jumping while keeping your back foot low even after your body goes up to ensure that the tail hits the ground. It would also help if you kept in mind that popping is the job of your cuff, unlike jumping, where you mainly use your thighs. Once your body reaches high enough and your back leg starts extending, use your cuff and ankle and pop down the tail. Now, let me point out what could go wrong. If you mix up the functions of your thighs, and calves, that's the time you encounter problems. For example, the role of your back calf is to pop the tail, not to raise your whole body. 
Cubs alone are generally not strong enough to play that role and might make you feel that you're not popping hard enough when you see that your board is not coming up. Let your thighs play that role instead and let your cub focus on popping the tail. Unless, of course, you can lift your entire body weight with your back cuff. Also, you must know the difference between kicking down with your whole leg and popping down with your ankle. Popping is an act of your ankle snapping down the tail, not an act of your leg pushing it down. From this angle, you can see my back toe doesn't even touch the ground. This proves that the use of calf and ankle doesn't help lift your weight. Instead, it pops the tail, lets it hit the ground, and raises the nose. Once again, popping is not an act of lifting your body. Its sole purpose is to let the tail hit the ground. So all you need is a snap of your ankle, not a kick of your whole leg. So imagine your day like this. Jump up by extending your thighs. Continue pressurizing your rear ankle and keep it low. Pop with your ankle when your body weight clears your board. Hitting the right timing is one of the most challenging parts of an ollie. Obviously, it's easier said than done. But I guarantee you will get used to it as you practice. Now, let's go back a little and talk about the foot placement. Strange order, huh? But trust me, there is a reason behind this. To pop, you use your cuff and snap the tail. Then, putting the ball of your toe on the tail allows you to convey the energy to your board effectively. However, the exact foot placement may vary depending on your preference. Some people put their back foot right in the middle of the tail, while others put theirs slightly to the side. Place them wherever you feel comfortable as long as you can pop the tail with your toe. And as for your front foot, generally you should place it behind the front bolts. This is just my opinion, but putting your feet where you feel comfortable so you can maintain your balance while approaching is a lot more important than, for example, trying to put your back foot right in the center of the tail. Because it doesn't mean anything if you can't pop the tail hard enough by placing your feet somewhere you don't feel comfortable and losing your balance. So try placing your feet at different places and see which one suits you the best. With your foot placement effective, and after popping the tail, it is time to slide up your front foot. Everyone always says you have to roll your ankle, slide up your board, and push the nose forward so you can level it out. Well, this is not wrong. But it left me some questions when I heard it for the first time, considering my board doesn't go up when I slide up my front foot when I'm standing on the ground still. I mean, if sliding up my front foot really brings up my board, it should do the same thing even when I'm standing on the ground still. But everyone knows it doesn't happen, which makes me think, what's the point of sliding up my front foot in the first place, and do I really have to roll my ankle? If so, for what purpose? To understand the fundamental role of the front foot, we have to dig deeper into the physics of the board. As you pop down the tail, the nose goes up in the form of an arc. If you force your front foot against this arc-shaped energy, those two different forces are combined and form a vertical upward momentum. So you have to focus on sliding up your front foot parallel to your board without having to bring it up intentionally. With that said, do you need to roll your front foot? According to physics, no. Don't be misled by common sayings. Rolling your front foot is just a way of doing something, not a fundamental reason why you have to do it. Your front ankle may roll due to the arc-shaped force we talked about, but it doesn't mean you should roll it intentionally. Rolling your front ankle is just a product of proper jumping, popping, and the reaction of your board. I see some people roll their front foot without jumping up. Doing this alone doesn't mean anything as your body still holds down your board. So make sure to practice jumping, popping, and sliding up your front foot. And your front foot will eventually roll. Once again, your goal here is not to roll your ankle. It is to cause friction between your board and your front foot. And rolling your ankle is just a way of achieving the goal. 
lastly, let me just give you some mental advice real quick. Don't be consumed by Ollie's, please. I know many people love skateboarding just because they couldn't Ollie. There are a lot of different ways to enjoy skateboarding. Sliding, ramps, and everything. Have fun. That's the key. Have fun. If you find practicing Ollie is not fun, do something else and come back to Ollie's anytime. Although we should cover more topics such as the physics when leveling out your board, weight distribution, and landing. But let's talk about them in the following videos. If you follow the previous steps and practice enough, you will get your Ollie's down. Also, don't forget to visit my website where you can browse and interact with the 3D models you saw in this video. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.